Statistics and Excel, Poisson Distribution Potholes in Road Example Part Number 2. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet. However, we started in a prior presentation, so you could go back to that presentation, start with a blank worksheet, or you'd probably be okay starting from this point going forward with a blank worksheet. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells, so you could get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab is where we start with a blank worksheet and are continuing on with it at this point in time. Quick recap of what we did in a prior presentation, looking at a Poisson distribution situation, but this time instead of a line weighting situation, instead of going over time intervals, we're going in a pothole situation, looking at space intervals, space and the roads in this case. So we started out imagining that we went out and actually counted how many potholes were in the road for every 100 mile time span and we generated our data here using a random number generator which can be found in the data and the data analysis but it's not just simply random it's random in accordance with the Poisson distribution and the mean being 20. In real life we wouldn't really know the mean would be 20 but we would be counting the potholes and then possibly analyzing the data. When we then did analyze the data, we then grouped uh, the, the data together and said, okay, how many times in 100 miles were there 12 potholes? And there were four of them. We did 500 100 mile tests, right? How many times were there 13 potholes in our 500 tests? There were 17 of them. And then based on this data, we created our graph over here. We also took a look at the percent of each to the total, which could have a graph, similar graph this way. We then calculated the mean of our data set. So the average number of potholes was 20.14. That's pretty close to the variance, which gives us an indication that it might be a Poisson distribution. So now let's do the, an actual Poisson distribution, which will be a more exact curve now. So now we're gonna say, let's see how close it lines up to an exact Poisson curve. I'm gonna say this equals the mean. I'm just gonna pick up the same mean and I'm gonna copy that down, putting my cursor on it, copy it down per miles. I'm just copying my data over so we can use that same data to be able to see it here. So I'm gonna say this equals the 20 and this equals the 100 so that we just have that same data over here but it's tying into our other data set so if i change that other data set this data set will change automatically so now let's let's do our uh, x number of potholes so x by the way x e, x is equal to number of potholes in the 100 mile in 100 mile span let's say and so i'm going to make let's make w a little bit smaller i'm going to hold control scroll in a bit all right and so then we're going to say this is going to be p of x which is going to be the poisson uh in this case we're going to say what's the likelihood that we have that number of potholes. I'm going to make this a header format by going to the home tab, font group, black, white, center, and that should do it. And then I'm going to go from zero, one, two, I'm going to bring it up to a hundred again. Zero potholes, one pothole, two potholes, selecting those three, putting my cursor on the fill handle, bringing it down to 100. Now it could go up to like infinity in theory, but in practice, you would think that if you had 100 potholes in 100 miles, you know, you're getting up to a lot of potholes. So if you're around 20 in the mean, you would think uh, it would be very unlikely that you're going to have a scenario of over 100 potholes, right? So then let's do our Poisson calculation. We're going to say this equals Poisson.dist. 
and we'll, we're going to pick up the x which in this case is going to be zero comma the mean is 20. I want to make that an absolute value so I'm going to select F4 on the keyboard so when I copy it down that 20 will not move down dollar sign before the V dollar sign before the one comma it's not going to be a cumulative so therefore not true but rather false because we just want the occurrences of zero only not everything up to zero even though zero is the first one here so we, we want to say false or we could put a uh, zero for false closing it up zero is easier to do I think if you get used to it but you can type in false if you want I always misspell false which is another reason uh, and then and then you know the whole classroom laughs at me because I can't spell false even though I do you know true false te whatever uh, any case home tab and then number let's percentify this thing add some decimals so there we have it so if I scroll on down and if we total this thing up total it should add up to a hundred so let's do let's do it this way alt equals uh, I have to click off